Gamers, are you looking to transform or create a village of your own and have no idea what to build? Well, you've come to the right video because I'll be showing you over 40 village builds. I'll also quickly mention that all of the builds showcased in this video are available to download over on my Patreon, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. All right, let's get started. First up, we're going to be taking a look at a whole bunch of different decorations, with these first four being specifically water features. So firstly here, we just have a simple water fountain. As you can see, we have a nice design here where we have like this main stem thing, and then we have the water up top here inside of a stone brick wall with a lantern on top. The water kind of sprawls out between these stairs and then down the sides and into this little basin down below. Next up, we have a bit more of a modern water feature. As you can see, the water starts up here and then it sprawls down to the left and right and then finally down into this little area down below. This might not match like a lot of villages, but if you're making like a modern village for whatever reason, then uh, this is definitely a really cool addition. Next up, we have a bit bigger of a fountain, except this time it's actually sprawling out and uh, powering these crops. I don't know if powering is the right word. It definitely isn't. Uh, it's it's watering these crops. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, if you want like a really nice aesthetic water feature that's also useful at the same time, this is definitely a really cool idea for that. And now for the final water feature, we have this small little pond. We'll be taking a look at another pond as well just after this. But uh, yeah, here I just showcase a bunch of different ways that you can decorate a pond and I've kind of just added them all into one. You might not want to add in all of these details to your pond because uh, like this one, it might look a little bit too detailed. But yeah, so we've added some little stones in the water here along with some seagrass some lily pads and we have a little island here with a sugarcane plant on that too. Then actually surrounding the pond, we have a whole bunch of azaleas, moss, rooted dirt, coarse dirt, grass, some bigger stones and a lantern as well, and then a little bush over here too. And now onto the second pond design. As you can see, this one's a little bit bigger and a little bit less detailed as well. So we have like a little forest surrounding it as well, which looks really nice. We have a pathway that actually leads up over here to a bench and also a little dock as well. Well, it's not really a dock. It's more of like a, I don't know, like a fishing platform or something like that. But yeah, then onto the inside of the pond, here. We've added in the same little stones design. We've added some sea pickles as well this time. And instead of like a little island, we've just added in some stone brick walls with a lantern on top. And it can definitely give a really nice look to your pond. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of nether portal designs with the first one here being a futuristic portal. So as you can see, it is pretty simple. We just have like a simple square portal behind this. And then we've kind of covered all of the exposed obsidian by using some deep slate blocks and also some quartz blocks. We've also added in some sea lanterns with some deep slate buttons. Actually, they're blackstone buttons, uh, excuse me. So yeah, so we've added some buttons in front of those to give like a pretty cool look. And we've also added a bit of a staircase up to the portal as well. Once again, uh, this might not entirely fit your village. Uh, so once again, if you're making a futuristic or modern village for whatever reason, this can definitely look cool in that. Next up, we have an island portal. So if you're building a beachside village, this can definitely be a really nice thing to add to that. Instead of just adding like a portal underground or something, you can make a little island or you can kind of transform a little island and turn it into a bit of a portal island. So yeah, we've added these big custom palm trees to the left and right, and their leaves are kind of draping over the portal. And then, yeah, as for the portal, we just have like a pretty standard portal. I felt it looked really cool leaving it like that, but you can, of course, change the portal up to, I mean, look however you want. Next up, we have the overgrown portal, and this one's actually on the inside of like a cave or something like that. And so even though this looks pretty like complicated, it's actually very easy to build. All you need to do is just take a chunk out of a cliff here, add in a massive nether portal in the background, texture the area with a bunch of mossy stone bricks, and also some mossy cobblestone bricks and some moss as well. Add in some extra details like some dripstone, glowberries, and some vines. And then something as well that I really love is just adding these little gaps using some stairs and slabs. And it lets you see the portal through these little areas. And I just really love the way that looks. It's such like a cool thing. And now for the final portal, we once again just have a pretty standard like portal, but then the actual decorations around it are what makes this look really cool. So it's as if we have like had this structure that's been here and it's been ruined over time. So we just have like these four pillars that are remaining and then we also have added in some extra decorations like a whole bunch of coarse dirt and some rooted dirt, some grass and ferns, some barrels, chests, and some lanterns as well. And then we've also covered the face of the portal here with a couple of vines. It might need a little bit of a trim. But uh, yeah, if you have like a ruined village or something like that, this can definitely be a really nice addition. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of different mine entrances with all of these being biome specific. So this one's actually meant to be in a tiger biome, but uh, as you can see, it's just kind of randomly been placed here. Uh, don't worry about that. Just imagine this is in a tiger biome. But um, yeah, I mean, this one can kind of work in any biome. So what you need to do is just come to like the side of like a cliff or like mountain kind of thing. And then just add in like a whole bunch of stairs and slabs and some andesite blocks as well. You could even sprinkle in a couple of details on the outside, like some extinguished campfires and some barrels. And then as we head onto the inside, as you can see, we have a rail here that would uh, theoretically lead all the way down to the bottom. Uh, I'm lazy and have just uh, not really gone down very far with this. But yeah, a really cool thing that I love about the interior of this one is that we have these spruce trap doors that are kind of butted up against each other. And it looks like a half slab pillar and 
and uh, it just looks really cool in my opinion. Next up, we have the Dark Oak Mine Entrance, and this one is in the uh, interior of a tree here. So this is actually a custom tree. As you can see, this one's pretty thick. And now, uh, yeah, so we can just head on inside down this uh, rickety staircase, theoretically down into a mine. Uh, yeah, once again, I haven't really gone that far down with this one. But yeah, that's all there really is to this one. Next up, we have the desert themed mine entrance. And as you can see, this one is in a bit of like an Egyptian or like castle themed one where we have these two towers on the left and right side. And then the area in between them is the actual mine entrance. We've also added some decorations to this one, like some textured little blocks here that sprawl out into the sand as if this was once like an actual pathway. And then we have like a bit of a broken railway as well. And then a mine cart out here too. This can definitely be a really nice addition to the front of any mine entrance. It can definitely look really cool. And now for the final mine entrance, we have a jungle themed one. So once again, this one's like kind of in the side of like a little hill or something like that. And it's made to look as if it has been abandoned. So we have like this little area back here that kind of looks like it's been like boarded up or something. And you can of course just come in and like open these whenever you want to actually go down. Once again, we've utilized that same design where we have like a just a lone minecart out here and also some broken tracks. And then the actual outside area of this, we've used a whole bunch of mossy stone bricks and mossy cobblestone to make it look like as if this was like once an actual structure, but has been reclaimed by nature. Next on to some farm designs. Starting off here, we have this little design here. Now this can definitely look really nice as like a main feature for your town or something like that. Or you could even sprinkle in like a whole bunch of these around your town. And then we've also added in this pathway that kind of sprawls between both of them as well. We have like a little bit of a staircase over on this side. And then we can of course take that up to the top platform here. Next up, we have the simple field farm design, but something that makes this look really cool instead of just like a plain boring field is that we actually have separated little mini fields inside this fenced off area. We've also used coarse dirt to line the entire area and also as the pathways in between all of the different farms to separate them as well. We've also got composters at the end of all of these pathways with a lid added onto them as well. And yeah, just a really simple but also great looking farm design. Next up, we have a farm that's actually like inside of a greenhouse. So as you can see, we just have like a simple building design here made up of some stripped spruce wood and also some slabs and stairs. The rest of it is entirely made up of glass. As you can see, the walls and the roof here are glass just to let as much light in as possible. Uh, I think that's how greenhouses are supposed to look. But yeah, we can head on inside and as you can see, we just have like a little pathway here and then we also have just like pretty much the entire floor taken up with carrots or whatever crop you wanted to use. We have this little area in the central area here as well with a composter and then a couple of little decorations as well. For the next farm design, we actually have an indoor or hydroponic farm design. So this is definitely a really nice look if you're wanting to do something on the inside instead of an exterior farm. But uh, at the same time, it's not very efficient. As you can see, we just have two crops in each of these sections. So uh, yeah, I mean, you could definitely make this a little bit more of an efficient design. But um, yeah, this is mainly meant to be just purely aesthetic. As you can see on the right here, we just have like these big tables full of pot plants. We've also got pot plants and azaleas and stuff on these shelves up here. And my favorite thing about this is actually the light design. As you can see, we have two levers that are pointing towards each other. And then we have some end rods in between those. And that just looks like a fluorescent light or something like that. And I really love the way this looks. I think I've said I really love the way this looks like a couple of times now. I, I need to stop saying it. <laughs> Next up, we have a bit bigger of a farm design. As you can see, this one takes up, uh, yeah, a massive area. So maybe you have like an area of your village or something like that where you're not really like utilizing the space. You could definitely just add something like this into your landscape. It's just like, yeah, basically a massive sprawling farm. There's not really any way that you can mess this up. Just adding a whole bunch of any kind of crop anywhere just along the natural landscape will always look really nice. And then you can spruce it up by adding in a pathway in between all of the crops. We can also add a bridge and like a man-made river in between that. And maybe even add in like a bit of a farmer's house over here as well. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple more smaller farm designs. So this one here is made to look more like a park or something like that. So we have a pathway here that that kind of surrounds this little pond design. This one could definitely be spruced up with uh, some of the details of the previous ponds that I showcased in this video. This pathway also leads up over to this little bench here and a bit of a custom tree as well. This could definitely be a little bit larger. Uh, it's a bit too small for my liking. And then the coolest thing about this is that we have some crop fields on the left and right side that uh, kind of like frame the entire thing. And I definitely really love the way... I almost said it again, man. For the next one, we have a bit of a like more man-made looking farm. So yeah, this one is like a roofed farm design. So we've got all of the crop here elevated up one block and then we have like this nice staircase around it that allows us to actually like walk up onto the crops without having to jump up. On each side we have some chests and a barrel as well and we also have some more barrels and composters on the other sides. And then as for the roof we have yeah just a simple like staircase roof design. But something we've done to make this look really cool is adding some signs all along the end here and it kind of makes it look like the roof is like kind of curved like I don't know how else to explain that but yeah it like goes up that way. Kind of looks like a Japanese style roof or something like that. For the next one we have another field design. This one's a little bit smaller this time and we actually have some squares instead of rectangular shaped ones and it's a bit more of 
like a stone themed one. So yeah, we've also utilized the really cool design of how like fence gates connect to these stone brick walls. And then we can utilize another one here to make it like an arch design. Now a bit of a downside to this one is that adding a fence gate in between these two makes these two like this. But Daddy Disruptive has a hack for you. If you chuck some string on top of these, they'll turn back to how they were before. And yeah, that'll allow you to add in the fence gate here. For the next one, we actually have a semi-automatic crop farm. So as you can see, we have these two tiers. We've got carrots and then wheat. Then pressing this button here will activate all of the dispensers at the back, which will release all of the water. It'll push all of the crops down into these hoppers and into the chest down below. We also have a nice wooden staircase on the right side of this as well that allows us to walk into here and replant the rest of our crops. For these next couple of farms, we're actually on my hardcore world. So forgive me for not being able to fly around as I uh, don't have an elytra yet. But yeah, so as you can see here, we have a fully automatic crop farm. We've got this guy working hard all day, all night, harvesting our crops and giving them over to this guy here. Just let me uh, get in there and get a bit of a closer look. Yeah, so as you can see, we just have like this guy here. He's kind of stuck in there because of these trap doors. And then we have our worker out here. He's just constantly harvesting. And because he's full of carrots, he's trying to give them to this guy to breed to, but they're actually all getting collected in these hoppers here. And then these hoppers get sent down into these barrels down below. And yeah, the actual design for this crop field is uh, really easy to do. All you need to do is just fence off a nice area that you like on like a hillside or something like that and just basically plant in a whole bunch of crops and it can look really cool. Kind of the same like design philosophy as the um, Riverside farm that I showcased previously, but uh, a bit more of like a natural design. Now these next couple of farms aren't actually farms, but they're like farms, if you know what I'm saying. So these ones here are some iron farms. They're very, very easy to build. The hardest part is just getting a couple of villages and also a zombie down into them. And these designs were created by Ian X04. I have to shout him out. He's the goat of uh, anything Minecraft farms. But yeah, these are like really, really easy to build farms. I haven't actually made them look nice yet. Uh, I don't know if I plan on doing that or not, but yeah. As you can see, we've got a whole bunch of iron in these. These have been running for a little while now. And uh, yeah, here's the storage of the other one. There's actually uh, a couple of mobs uh, have gotten into this. As you can see, we've got like some string and bones and rotten flesh. What the hell? But uh, yeah, definitely check out his channel and his starter iron farm tutorial if you wanted to make these for yourself. For these next two farms, we've actually got uh, two joined into the same build. I'll get to the uh, other side in just a second. But as you can see on the front here, we just have a simple sugarcane farm. So once the sugar canes grow up high enough in front of these observers, the piston below will push it and then it'll get collected by the minecart with the hopper down below. Uh, you might be able to see it. There you go. Uh, whoop, there it goes. And yeah, that minecart with the hopper will drop all of the items into these hoppers below and then into this chest here. The cool thing about this is you can actually replace it with bamboo as well if you wanted to harvest a whole bunch of bamboo for uh, whatever reason. And then heading over to the back of this build, as you can see, we have a lava dripstone farm. So yeah, I mean, nothing too special here. We just got a whole bunch of dripstone. There's lava above these and then this allows the lava to drip through the dripstone down into the cauldrons and then you basically just have infinite fuel for your furnaces. I mean, one lava bucket can smelt a hundred items. Just think about that. That is insane. And then all of this is encased in a really nice design. As you can see, we just have like a standard like house design. It's roofed as well and it has like a whole bunch of details. I just really love creating these in my villages. And now for the final farm, we're actually in my base and we're going to head underneath the base here. And as you can see, we have a fully automatic melon farm. So this one isn't really made to look too aesthetically pleasing, but I actually kind of like the way this looks being underground. It looks like an industrial kind of theme or something like that. And yeah, so we actually have four separate fully automatic melon farms here. So we've got one here, one here, and then the same thing on the other side. And so the basic way that this works is we have all of these melons here. Once they actually grow a melon, the observer will detect the stem updating. The pistons will then be powered and push the melons into the ground, which will harvest them. And then this minecart with the hopper down below will pick up all of the melons, send them into the hoppers down here, and then these will all be sent down into the chests below. And then, yeah, I have yet to actually set up the uh, interior of this area where we're going to be trading our villages, but I recommend adding something like this here with a whole bunch of farmer villages so that you can trade all of your melons to them for some free emeralds. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of different house designs that you can use in your villages. Uh, yeah, we're kind of starting off with the uh, biggest and craziest one. So if you're making more of like a uh, medieval like castle themed village or something like that, then this can definitely be a really cool base to add to your village. I mean, this is also meant to be like mainly a standalone base design, but it can definitely work inside of a village. And the cool thing about this is I also have a complete tutorial video for this on my channel. So be sure to check that out if you wanted to build this for yourself. I'm just gonna go through a quick tour here. So um, watch the video if 
you want a full tour. But yeah, so starting off here, we have an actual dock. The original build for this was entirely in the ocean. So this is like the main way that you'd arrive at it. But I mean, yeah, you could remove this and just make it like a simple pathway. But yeah, so we have these simple towers on the left and right. And then at the back, we have the same one. It's just a little bit higher. There's nothing really too special inside of these as there's not a lot of room. But I mean, you could add whatever you wanted in here. And then the back left tower is our main one. We'll get to that in just a second. So yeah, on the exterior here, we have like a couple of little crop farms. We've also got a nice little water fountain design over here. And then most of this base is actually on the exterior. So as you can see, we have some storage over here. We have our toggleable nether portal, smelting, crafting, more storage, and also nether wart and brewing and like some melon and pumpkin farms as well. These aren't really that useful. They're mainly just kind of aesthetic, but yeah. And yeah, so now let's head over to the back left tower. And as you can see on the first floor here, we just have like some combined storage, smelting and crafting. Actually, uh, there's no crafting blocks. Uh, oh yeah, there is. Never mind. <laughs> heading downstairs, we have absolutely nothing. And then heading back upstairs, as you can see on this floor here, we have our main storage area where we have a whole bunch of double chests, single chests, and barrels as well. We've also got another crafting table just for some ease of use. Heading up to the next floor, we have the bedroom. So we have a whole bunch of personal storage and some barrels along here. And in the corners, we've got a whole bunch of armor stands for decoration. And yeah, and now we can head up to the next floor, which is actually the enchanting area. I mean, yeah, there's nothing too special up here. We've got some nice little decoration in all of these little areas and also over here as well. And then finally, we can head all the way up to the roof. Um, yeah, there's nothing really much up here. A cool thing that I kind of left out with this is you can actually add a nice little flag up on this one here and yeah, it'd look pretty cool. For these next couple of houses, we're uh, once again back on my hardcore uh, world. So yeah, I can't really fly around. So sorry about that. And for the first base here, we're taking a look at my actual main base design. I might just place a whole bunch of scaffolding so we can get a better look at it. Yeah, so as you can see, we have this nice circular design here. It's just like a big cobblestone circle and then we have have like these separate areas here where we've placed in all of our farms. We've alternated between wheat and carrots to give like a really nice look to all of this. Uh, I have yet to plant this last one. Uh, don't worry about that. And heading on inside, as you can see, we have pathways that go around the entire base here that allows us to actually access all of the different farms. And then as for the actual main base here, we have like a kind of barn style house where we have like these arched roofs here. And then we have like a central area that's actually the second floor with a like nice little arched roof as well. Along the outside, we have a whole bunch of windows. We've got azaleas as well for some nice decoration. And yeah, now we can head on inside to the interior. As you can see on the left here, we have my giant smelting wall. At the back here, we have my crafting station. And then on the right side, we have my main storage area and finally my bedroom off to the right here. Once again, down the ladder, we have my fully automatic melon farm. I've already showcased that. So we're instead going to head upstairs where we have my enchanting area. Uh, this is yet to be completed. Uh, I want to fill in all of this area here with the bookshelves, but I uh, don't have them yet. We also have a whole bunch of just random storage up here as well, just for like other stuff once I've run out of uh, room down below. And then we also have a librarian up here as well with my mending book trade. Uh, yeah, he's just straight vibing up here. You know, next up, we're taking a look at a couple of actual like main house designs that your like villagers would be living in. So this first one here is just a simple five by five house design. It's just a little square along the outside here. We've added in my signature design of like these pillars with these sticking out parts. We've added some buttons on those. We've also added some stairs and some trapdoors below those for a nice little arched look in between these pillars along this area here. We have added in a couple of fence gates, a fence, and then a lantern as well. And then on the sides, we have like the roof trim in this area heading on inside. As you can see, um, yeah. It's nothing too special. We've just got a bed, a barrel, and a lantern. That's pretty much it. For the second house design, we have a bit bigger of a uh, house design. So this one's actually in a T shape, as you can see the uh, area over here as well. We've got pretty much the exact same like design philosophies on the exterior here. And heading on inside, as you can see, we've just added in a couple of beds, a nice little table as well. And uh, yeah, for the third standard house design, as you can see, we have an L shaped house. Once again, pretty much the exact same uh, like design exterior stuff going on. Uh, I just realized I forgot to add buttons on those logs. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, it's going to annoy me if I don't add those on. So yeah, let's slap those on real quick. And yeah, so heading on inside, as you can see, I haven't made the interior for this one because I'm a lazy prick. But uh, yeah, I would probably uh, actually change one of these to just be a solid wall. I'd add a ladder up here, add in a bit of a ceiling here as well, and then maybe add in some just random decorations like some beds and barrels and chests and stuff. And now for the final building on my hardcore world, we have this like lumberjack or like firewood shack thing. So at the front here, we have like a bit of a log splitting area. This does look kind of weird at the moment. I do want to add in some extinguished campfires around the place to look like some split logs. So heading on inside, we can head to the actual build here. Once again, I haven't actually made the interior, but in here I would add in some chests and barrels and then some just like log piles and stuff. And then as we head out the back here, we have like a bit of a man-made or like man-planted forest. And this is like obviously where the guy would come out to to uh, harvest all of his wood. And then he'd head back to the front here to split all of the logs. Next up, we're actually taking a look at a storage house design. So 
as you can see, we have a pretty detailed exterior here where we have my signature pillar design. And uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of details in the exterior here, which you could cut back on if you wanted to. You could definitely remove a whole bunch of these trap doors if you wanted. But uh, yeah, let's head on to the inside, the actual uh, juicy part here. And as you can see, we don't actually have that much storage in here. This one's mainly meant to be aesthetic. As you can see, the interior of this is laid out very aesthetically. Yeah, so we have a whole bunch of double chests on the front and back walls. And then on the middle part here, we have like this nice hanging chest and we have some barrels below that as well. And we just have the same thing on the other side here. For the next build, we have uh, another storage house. This one is uh, a little bit less detailed on the exterior, which is kind of to my liking. And then as we head onto the inside, as you can see, this one's actually laid out to be way more efficient than the previous one. See, on the left and right side, we have a, a whole bunch of double chests, probably like three or four times as many as the previous one. And yeah, we've also added in our crafting blocks on the floor here so they don't get in the way. And then at the back here, we just have like a couple of decorations and some little standalone barrels as well. Next up, we have a desert themed base. So if you're making a village in a desert biome, this can definitely be some really nice inspiration for some bases in that kind of style. So as you can see, we've added a whole bunch of jungle accents to this. And also the main layout of the base is very like square. I just really like the way that looks for like desert themed bases and stuff like that. And then just to bump up all the details, just add like a whole bunch of random crap around the place, like the staircase that leads up to the second floor. We've got like a nice roof section. Above all of the windows, we've added in this like nice arch design with a lantern as well. And all the way at the top here, we have like this nice little gazebo like roofed section. Uh, there's actually no way to get up here. You might want to add like a ladder or something, but yeah. Next up, we're taking a look at a whole bunch of different bridge designs with the first one here being a ruined wooden bridge. We also got a pristine variant that I'll get to in just a second. But yeah, as you can see, to make this one look really ruined, we've added a whole bunch of just random decorations around the place like glowberries, leaves, vines, rooted dirt, and yeah, just a whole bunch of random stuff. We've also taken big chunks out of the original design to make it look like it was maybe once on fire or like attacked by like cannonballs or maybe it's just really old or something like that. And uh, yeah, now let's uh, head over to the pristine one. So yeah, here's the pristine version of the bridge. As you can see, it's in uh, yeah tip top shape. We've got some nice contained leaves that kind of like elevate and then like D elevate. I don't know what I'm saying right now, man. It, it's like an arch, you know? It looks really cool, in my opinion. But yeah, I really love the way that this design looks with like the whole bunch of different like designs in every section. We've also got a nice little pass through down... Uh, well, I mean, it's supposed to be a pass-through. Uh, forgive me for that. <laughs> you just imagine this is on the other side and we've got like a tunnel that kind of goes through that. We've also got like a nice little fake pass-through through here. So uh, it actually won't really work because this area is too short, but uh, you might be able to actually make it work if you wanted to have that for some reason. And then we've also got another final pathway, of course, along the top of the actual bridge here. Next up, we have another wooden bridge, but this time it's in a like a bit of a different style. So we have these two massive arches. So this entire thing is actually made up of spruce and we've also got these nice little dark oak accents. These kind of look like little bracings or like support or something like that. Along the edge of the bridge here, we've got some nice little lamppost designs. We've also added a whole bunch of details into this as well to make it look a little bit more lively. If you've got the room on your bridge, I definitely recommend adding just random little details like this. It can definitely make it look a whole lot nicer. And then yeah, we also have this nice little roofed section on the center of the bridge here. If you didn't like this, you could also add this on the left and right side, or you could even just make the entire thing a roofed bridge. It's entirely up to you. Next up, we're taking a look at a bunch of different biome specific bridges. So the first this one here is a desert themed bridge. And as you can see, this one is definitely a very unique looking bridge. It is uh, kind of weird looking. But yeah, so we've got like these nice little circular designs that repeat and they also have the pillars like connected to them, of course. We've added a whole bunch of jungle wood accents in between these and like the same kind of bracing support as the previous bridge as well. And we've also added these like little walls here with some lanterns on top of those too. For the next biome bridge design, we just have like this simple arched stone bridge. The main thing I really love about this is that we have like these separated little arches in the uh, main arch. So yeah, we've We've got like a little one on the sides and then a bigger one on the center here, which actually allows us to sail through this as well. So this bridge can definitely be pretty useful for a uh, river that you might like regularly commute along. And yeah, so we've also added in some very light texturing using some stone blocks, just kind of sprinkled in around the place. Definitely makes it look a little bit less like uh, boring. Next up, we have the forest biome bridge. So for this one, we've incorporated a whole bunch of oak leaves to this. So oak leaves pretty much line all of the handrails here and also the roof too. But we've kept it with more of a contained look and instead of making it look like overgrown or something like that. So we've added a whole bunch of trapdoors and signs to these to make it look like they have been like contained. For the next bridge, we have a suspension bridge. This one's meant to be like in a jungle biome. So as you can see, we have like these little tiki torch designs on the sides. And then we have our like main arch bridge with some leaves hanging down below. Now my main tip for building one of these, because um yeah, it really depends on the length. Uh, I definitely recommend using slabs, of course, but adding in trapdoors as well can definitely help ease the transition between slabs. So if we didn't have trapdoors here, as you can see, the uh, connection is very 
like sharp or it's like yeah it just looks weird it's like barely connected so adding in trap doors to this will definitely make it look a little bit more supported i guess and just as one final little bonus build i thought i should probably showcase the uh actual thumbnail for this video which is this nice little town here that i created and yeah that build is actually based on this build which was built quite a long time ago and uh, i just decided on updating it as you can see the houses here are yeah they're they're pretty weird looking and this is after actually changing them up to look a little bit more normal but yeah i just felt like i had to switch them out so this is how the new village looks it's a little bit more expanded as well as you can see over here we've added in some extra stuff the buildings also go up and along the hillside here and yeah it's definitely nice for like a kind of like a lakeside or riverside themed village or something like that we've definitely incorporated a very different style of pathway that i don't usually do which is like a textured andesite and gravel path and then we've outlined pretty much everything and all of the buildings using some stone bricks which definitely gives a very interesting look but it is definitely a pain in the ass to do even in creative mode another interesting feature is we have this nice little bridge here that leads over to a kind of contained big oak tree and over here we have like a little campsite as well with some custom trees around that too and a bit of a well as well okay and so that pretty much does it for all of the builds i wanted to showcase thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video